Let's bring in, once again, Mark Favre, the editor and publisher of the Loom, Boom, and Doom Report, who I think joins us by phone again, and I think is, uh, the connection may be a little bit better. Mark, can you, I apologize, but can you recap your, your macro call right now, as you were saying it last time? Well, basically what we had is a, a bull market in assets between 2002 and the end of 2007, early 2008, and a weak dollar during that time. 2008 was the opposite, a strong dollar, and all asset markets went down except for bonds. And now 2009, we bottomed out on the S&P at 666 in March, and since then have rallied strongly, and in emerging markets even more, but the dollar was weak. And I expect now, maybe for the next couple of months, a period of a recovering dollar and a correction time in asset markets. As, as the dollar strengthens? Correct, because a strong dollar means global liquidity is tightening. Is, does the dollar uh, rally or, or is strength continued because the Fed, the people will see the Fed tightening down the road or because, um, or because the U.S. is the best? Well, I, I don't think it's the best, but the U.S. is the least cyclical economy. <laughs> As Professor Rubini pointed out, emerging economies are essentially more cyclical than the U.S. economy. They're like a warrant on the U.S. economy. And I think in a scenario where growth will be disappointing, I think emerging markets are kind of vulnerable. They also became the favorite investment destination by momentum players. And I think we had huge increases in stock prices. A lot of markets have doubled in price between March and just now, a couple of days ago. And so a correction is possible. But having said that, I would also argue that the worse the global economy is, the more stocks could go up because we have all these central bankers who are nothing else than money printers. And they're dangerous to the health of the global economy. They created first the Nasdaq bubble and then the housing bubble. And now they want to create another bubble to bail them out. And that is, of course, not the recipe for healthy, sustainable growth. So on the one hand, Muriel, I mean, we, you can ask Mark a question, but he's saying money printers inflate, inflating new bubbles. You're saying that stimulus was necessary uh, and apparently sufficient to get us out of the, the mess we were in. Well, in the short run, that stimulus was absolutely necessary because we risked the near depression. I think the key issue right now is going to be the exit strategy from this monetary overhang and the fiscal stimulus. If we do the contraction in monetary fiscal policy too soon, we end up in a recession. If we wait too long, then there's monetization deficit. Expect inflation goes up towards the end of next year. Long rates go up, and you could have stagflation. So the exit is critical. In the short run, we needed it, but now we have to think ahead right. and when and how and how fast we do it. Do you have a question for Mark? Well, Mark, you talk about a crisis that is something very different from a correction. Certainly, I believe the correction is going to occur. So when you think about the crisis, what do you mean by that? Well, I think that usually an economic and financial crisis uh, leads to some fundamental changes and purchase the excesses that prevailed before. That is the purpose of a recession, of a depression, to clean the system. But what has happened under Mr. Bernanke and the Treasury in the U.S., it's made the transparency even worse than before. It's bailed out people that have nothing to do with essentially the man on the street in the real economy. It's bailed out the financial system. What does the simple man gain from bailing out all the derivatives market? Let the derivatives player go bankrupt, and then the system is cleaned. And in my view, the big crisis is ahead of us. It may come in four or five years' time, maybe only in ten years' time, but the total breakdown of the system is ahead of us, and it will devastate the global economy. Isn't there a chance, though, Mark, that uh, central bankers could play this the right way and end up pulling back from uh, all of this spending just in time to prevent a bubble like that from happening? Is there any way to smooth out some of the rough ups and downs that you see in any natural market cycle? No, I don't think so, because uh, if we look at the Fed action post-2001, 
when they slashed interest rates from 6.5% on the Fed fund rate down to 1% and left it at 1% until June 2004, when actually the recovery began in November 2001. And after June 2004, they increased interest rates, but in baby steps, lagging behind the market. And so my view is that the Fed and the other central bankers will leave interest rates far too low for far too long, and that actually the budget deficit of the U.S., the household deficit, will increase from this year approximately $2 trillion. Next year it could be $2.5 trillion. Nuriel, it is easy to say that uh, it's hard to teach a, an old dog new tricks, and the Fed's past is checkered when it comes to this uh, scenario. But Bernanke is not Greenspan, right? Uh, and why, why do we automatically assume he's going to make the same mistakes, especially uh, when the memory of this mess is so fresh? Uh, he will try not to make the same mistakes, and he has learned from the past that when we have to normalize, we have to do it faster, not just with baby steps. The trouble is going to be that the economy is going to grow weakly, and it's going to grow weakly for the Fed to normalize too fast might lead to a recession, and therefore they're going to have to do it too slowly. If they do it too slowly, then you can have a risk of another asset and credit bubble. That was exactly the mistake was done in 2004 and 2006. So he's going to try to avoid that mistake, but in practice, if the recovery is weak, they'll have to do it too slowly. There is a risk of another asset bubble. In that sense, I think Mark has a valid point. You know, Mark, I know it's very difficult to play the what-if game, but where do you think we'd be if central banks had not stepped in and tried to help stop things? Well, I think the S&P would have gone down a bit further, but uh, in general, the system would be cleaned out of the excesses, and some investment banks, aside from Bear Stearns and uh, Lehman, would be bust. But I think in general, the system would be healthier because the debt load and the burden on taxpayers would be reduced. So my view is actually that Either you accept the market mechanism or you don't. And for the central bankers of this world, and in particular Mr. Greenspan and Bernanke, the market mechanism is all right as long as prices go up, except for crude oil. That they object. <laughs> but when it goes down, that they but, feel they have to intervene but and will we be looking, the market mechanism. Will we be looking at tent cities? Will we be looking at uh, major companies gone? Will we be looking at an unemployment rate of 15, 16, 17 percent? Well, I mean, we have already unofficially an unemployment rate of around 16 percent if I, the discouraged workers are counted in. But... I guess, where, would we be looking at a much worse scenario, yeah. or you think it would just be a slightly worse scenario? Personally, I think it would be a better scenario. Yeah. But uh, temporary, we may have uh, had a, a bigger decline in asset markets and no rebound since March. But other than that, I think that actually the system would be cleaned. And I'd also like to point out, concerning central banks' policies, Today, employment in the U.S. is lower than it was in 1999. So it's basically a lost decade. In the meantime, the financial sector has made billions of dollars and has compensated its what I would call largely useless financiers and dealers uh, with these huge rewards. And the simple man in the United States, the typical household, is no better off than 10 years ago.